All right. Well, first, uh, uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, uh, th this morning here, we're going to uh, continue with the uh, with what we uh, started last time, and that's about the uh, uh, the ancient Egyptian uh, treasures, the treasures of uh, uh, ancient Egypt. So the uh, for first, I'm going to also uh, highlight. The, uh, uh, the issue of the papyrus that we talked about before. Uh, this is, I'm going to show you now uh, the uh, papyrus. This is a papyrus here that I'm going to, everyone will going to have a, a, a piece of papyrus like this. And this papyrus, by the way, is going to have a different, uh, different uh, uh, reproduction. So this is, this is, this one, by the way, is very, very strong. This papyrus made to last, it lasted thousands of years. And uh, as you can you notice that the, the papyrus itself is made of uh, stripes of, uh, stri of, the, of the papyrus uh, in horizontal and vertical. And then under pressure, it has uh, 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 something like glued by itself. So the stick was come like, like this. And then what's the... Uh, the ancient Egyptian used it to write on it by in, in, with the hieratic or the motic or hieroglyphics, or to uh, to do like many of the papyrus long enough to to it's like a book you can write things on it. But now the papyrus in different sh in different sizes. This is this is just one size. There is different sizes, and they what they, they use it now to a kind of a reproduction. Of the arts, like this is the 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 get like series like this is the as you can see, this is the pyramids, and this sphinx, here, the sphinx, and another another one another example like this is the uh, uh, King Tut, that you can see the mask of it here. This is the mask of King Tut, okay. So they use this is by the way handmade uh, papyrus, uh, uh, drawn. And this is like this is Queen uh, Nefertiti. This Queen Nefertiti. It's uh, uh, unique. It's mask uh, located on the um, uh, in in the, in the German uh, museum. And this is like a a, a a map for all Egypt. And this what's unique about this map here. So uh, this is a unique idea that the uh, whoever. Had this idea, had the, the like the map of Egypt, and they had this is kind of whatever uh, famous about the sites uh, of Egypt, like from the in, in the, the like the pyramids in the top, uh, pyramids and and Sphinx, uh, King Tut and King and Queen Nefertiti, uh, and also Abu Simbel. So that shows the location of this famous site. Also another scenery here. The last one I'm going to show you now. This is the uh, like the judgment day in the, uh, what the, what the ancient Egyptian believed that the good person going to go to the paradise and the evil person will go to the hellfire and this is the this is the judgment this is the scale this this scale here going to judge the the weight of the hearts of the deceased person if that heart is heavy it means that he was sinning and he was, was he was a bad person. This is that the heart will be, uh, and this is the feather or the symbol of justice. Symbol of justice, if it is, if the person is good, so the symbol of justice uh, will be heavier and the heart will be lighter. And that's how the judgment uh, uh, going to be. This is long story and uh, uh, there's also very long papyrus uh, about, about that. Well, specifically about that uh, judgment day. So now we're going to start the presentation that last time we were not uh, able to uh, uh, to see uh, uh, details of it. But now you can see everybody can see uh, see here. Everybody can see the uh, screen clear right now. Right now. Okay. So uh, soon here that uh, that's going to come to start uh, uh, clicking and uh, on the slide. 
and talk about each very uh, uh, very short just uh, uh, description about what we what we're going to see. So starting now with the uh, about to start now about the the location of Egypt. Um, the location of Egypt. Look at uh, Egypt located in um, in the in the middle in the upper uh, northeast of Africa, and uh, Egypt, as you can see, the populations the populations of uh, the Egyptians around the River Nile, as you can see here. So we're going to start first with the uh, uh, Abu Simbel, and you can see. Uh, uh, from actually this this one for the Queen uh, Hatshepsut, uh, as we talked about here before, Queen Hatshepsut had the temple in Deir el Bahari nearby Luxor, and they uh, had everything. And this is how the, the basically the engineer cut the temple uh, in, from in the mountain and recorded everything that the the, the, the Queen wanted to. Queen Hatshepsut wanted to tell the following generations. So everything is recorded here. This is like a permanent media uh, uh, recording for all what the queen or the king have done. They record it in the temples, and the, uh, now we know details about her, her what she have done uh, during her time. Uh, for instance, the, her trips to uh, to south. Uh, exchanging goods be, uh, between the south and, the, and and Egypt and so on. So moving now to uh, uh, the uh, the uh, this is the uh, Aswan, and Aswan is the uh, uh, the at the lower. When we say Upper Egypt, we mean the south, because basically the level of of Egypt uh, has is higher in the south. Than the north. This, this is the reason they call it Upper Egypt in the south and Lower Egypt in the north. So this is the River Nile here, as you can see, with the Fluka. That the uh, uh, when you go to Aswan, you can uh, use such uh, Fluka and enjoy the the nature of, of Aswan and the River Nile. And the River Nile is known is was uh, 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 Egypt was the gift of the uh, River Nile. And, uh, the River Nile goes from all the way from the south to all the way to the north, and in the banks of the river, most of the Egyptian uh, cities around most of the Egyptians uh, lives there. This is uh, 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 Abu Simbel Temple, and Abu Simbel Temple that was uh, made by uh, King Ramses II, and uh, Ramses II he was known that he had this kind of gigantic scale of statues and temples to honor his, uh, uh, his, his time. Uh, King, King Ramses built this uh, statue, uh, statue uh, these temples uh, in, in the honor uh, of uh, uh, himself, honor himself uh, from everywhere you find the gigantic scale of statues for him. And the, what's unique about this temple, by the way, that this temple was very uh, after building the high dam in the 60s was about to go under water but uh, the uh, the UNICEF the whole world participating in rescuing this temple they cut they cut this temple to pieces by the way and they moved it up in a higher level and with this how it's saved and you can see it's very close so what's unique about this temple that through the door of the uh, the main entrance the sun could go through inside uh, twice a year only one one time in the uh, at the time of the uh, of the birthday of the king and the second time uh, for just few minutes and the second time in the uh, in the day when the the king was coronated and that's how uh, people come from all over uh, the world to to witness this historical events here so these people here standing to w witness the the sun will uh, uh, raise, will, will penetrate the entrance and goes all the way to the Holy of the Holies to, and move slowly on the faces of the, uh, the kings and gods inside. And that's what's unique about this temple here. And that will show the magnificent uh, excellence of the Egyptians in, in the science of how the sun moves and how 
the earth to move so they were able to to do that in a way to uh, to show uh, the movement of the sun and how how they will control even the building uh, 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 accordingly now we are in uh, uh, in, a, in a city called Etfu and you can see how how large and how gigantic the scales of the of the pillars in the in the uh, in the temple and look how every every inch uh, something recorded there to show the um, okay uh, to show the the uh, what the king wanted to record and you, as you can see it here uh, everything is uh, recording the what whatever the king wanted to tell the future generation and what they have done it's recorded uh, so basically you can you can see how how the how these pillars are recorded because this is the very large pillars and they are all over it all sides from the top to the bottom the recording uh, to show what what have been done through the time of such a king so basically the Egyptians believe in eternity and they believe in the afterlife and there will be a judgment day and there will be a reward for the good person and punishment for the bad person. Uh, this is Hora's temple. As you can see also, this is, uh, 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 you can see all this recording here to show the, uh, uh, what the Egyptians believed about such, uh, uh, such God as Hora's. Horus was the son of Osiris, and, and Isis was the wife of Horus. So this is a, a, a three a, a God symbol of uh, of good, and this how what they look at it because they had always uh, looked at the good and evil uh, represented in what they believed. And so we'll move on now to uh, a city. Uh, you can say this is the Luxor. The city of uh, Luxor, and you, and and and, you, and when you look at this, how beautiful the uh, and uh, this is the river Nile, and this is the banks of the river, and this is uh, this looks like this is one of the hotels, and how the settings, and how there's beautiful accommodations. Uh, not only uh, you you going to enjoy the historical monuments and memorials, but also the modern facilities that wherever you go, Egypt, uh, uh, the tourism industry is uh, one of the main industries in Egypt. Look at this. Uh, this is the Karnak Luxor uh, and, and this Karnak Temple. The uh, Karnak Temple, as you can see, in a gigantic scale also, the, the kings uh, erected their statues and, and all what they have done to show their religious uh, belief and their uh, strong belief in the afterlife. Uh, and this is uh, Karnak. When you mention the Karnak, Karnak Temple, you uh, mentioned that this is the largest uh, religious place uh, within one boundary. So one, uh, the Kar Karnak temple, it's a very large temple that, uh, uh, that, that give it that uh, title. It's the largest place on earth that uh, has in one place. There's many of these uh, uh, representations of the, uh, because every king, when they come, they, they uh, built uh, things related to them to show their uh, lo uh, their religious uh, belief and their uh, strong belief in the afterlife and also what the what the what good they have done. Uh, so this is details about uh, in, in, in in that in that temple to show the the uh, the kings and the, what they have done in their life of accomplishment. This basically, as I mentioned, it's a recording for uh, uh, what, whatever uh, uh, lifetime, like the lifetime of the king is like an open book through this recording here, because they record what they have done in their military uh, expeditions or in, the, in all their uh, relationship with the, with the uh, people or the relationship with gods. So everything is recorded here. Uh, so you can say every, the, the, uh, the uh, okay, I'm going to admit some here. Uh, all this uh, uh, hieroglyphic this is hieroglyphic well, the, the, the ancient Egyptian language uh, consists of uh, three uh, uh, actually the, 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 it's writings so we we'll call it writing because really we don't know exactly how it was uh, pronounced 
but to, to a great extent, it was found, what was known through the uh, discoveries of Champollion when he, uh, uh, when he was able to connect names uh, from different uh, uh, writings, and one of it was the, was the Greek and the Coptic. In a, in, a, in a stone called uh, Rosetta stone. We'll, we'll see it another time, but this is how the, the pronunciation of the ancient Egyptian language was known, started. And so, uh, so basically all this was recorded in such way. And this is like, a, and still we're still in Karnak Temple now, and that shows the uh, Tariq al Kibash, uh, uh, which is the way with a human head, or a human, uh, uh, the body of line with uh, with the head of uh, uh, Rand, or uh, this is uh, similar to the uh, Sphinx. So now we'll be moving uh, toward another city uh, called uh, Hor Horgada, uh, and this is Horgada. It's in the river, and the it's in the Red Sea, and and as you can see, uh, the accommodations is very beautiful here uh, on the Red Sea. Uh, this is uh, Makadi Bay that uh, uh, Horgada, it's a place where people interested in uh, scuba diving on the rivers in the, in the, in the Red Sea uh, could, could be shown uh, that uh, people come to it uh, from different parts of the world just specifically uh, to, to do scuba diving and such uh, uh, sports which is kind of unique in the world there's a very unique places like Ras Muhammad and nothing like it in the world that people go specifically for it and that's how what uh, make it famous and people in Europe they go there just to spend the weekends in such uh, in such places so now we'll, we'll move on to another city famous now called Sharm el Sheikh uh, we're moving quickly now Sharm el Sheikh Sharm el Sheikh is in the uh, if you look at the Red Sea you will find it in the in the corner of the two branches of the sea uh, uh, relate, uh, closer to Sinai uh, Peninsula, where this uh, holy, uh, the holy mountains of Mount Sinai and Saint Catherine uh, nearby. So this is uh, uh, Sharm el-Sheikh now uh, with accommodation of the uh, the uh, 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 the meetings, meetings, uh, conference meetings from around the world. You could see you could see the the uh, the Red Sea and the uh, the mountains of uh, of such. Uh, uh, you know, uh, nature, all there in the in the same uh, area that were in the in the in the uh, in Sharm el Sheikh. Sharm el Sheikh is a very unique uh, place to visit, and people, especially nowadays, they go there to enjoy the uh, the Red Sea. Look, look at the Red Sea here, and and the, this is the mountain uh, across uh, of Sinai, and so this is accommodation here available now you can people go there and enjoy so we're moving on to another city called al fayyum uh, al fayyum uh, it's if you, this is a city it's like uh, uh, representing uh, uh, almost all over egypt it's called a, a mini egypt where you can see the nature and the uh, the accommodations the temples the tombs and also the uh, uh, in al fayyum you could find the uh, uh, the historical uh, churches that you that you can uh, uh, find only in Fayum, where the uh, the holy uh, trip of the uh, Jesus and Mary when they moved to Egypt when Jesus was young to escape from the uh, from, from the uh, when the when the life of Jesus was in danger, so the uh, uh, Mary and Jesus moved to Egypt and moved. Uh, from from north to south, uh, and then when when they were informed by uh, Angel Gabriel that it's time for them to go back, they went back. So Fayum was one of these places, and you can see. So now we'll move to another very famous uh, city in uh, in Egypt, and uh, what's famous about it is uh, uh, the pyramids. This is the pyramid. This is the second pyramid, uh, uh, Hafra Temple. Uh, uh, Hafra. Uh, the, this is this. Uh, Pyramids were built by uh, King Hafra, and this Sphinx here, and you can see Sphinx in the shape of a, uh, a, line, uh, uh, a body of line with a human head. The engineer of the of the pyramid saw in a piece of uh, rock in front of it that shape. So instead of just uh, 
removing it completely. You know, he, he took advantage of it because this is it was not like built. Uh, uh, just the, the the engineer took advantage of the of the of the rock, that huge rock in front of the pyramids, and he, he saw in it that uh, that shape, um, the body of lion, symbol of strength and power, and the uh, human human head, symbol of intelligent. And you can see what happened to the uh, to Sphinx that uh, his nose and his beard was destroyed throughout the years, but the main shape of uh, of the sphinx is still witnessing the all events throughout uh, uh, these thousands of years of uh, of the egyptian civilizations so the uh, details about how how the nose of the of the uh, of uh, sphinx was destroyed uh, uh, several theories about that one of it is that the uh, when the french occupied egypt the soldiers of the of the french uh, uh, troops was pointing to the to the noise of Sphinx, and that's how they destroyed it. This is one of just of the, of the theories. So coming now to another scenery of the Sphinx here and the pyramids, and what's uh, uh, interesting that uh, this uh, you can see the view. So this is the big uh, the, uh, the, old, the, uh, the first pyramid, and this is the second, and this is the third, and the the is if you can you can see from a distance. The, the middle one has high, in a, uh, uh, kind of higher, just because of the the uh, the level of the land is higher than the other one. But the this the uh, the known well known pyramid in Egypt it took long many years to be built, and it was basically uh, the the king they had it as a uh, to have their bodies buried in the uh, uh, in it, and related to the religious belief to rise to the uh, heavens uh, through the shape of the pyramid itself. And the, just the secrets of the pyramids took long. Uh, 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 many people talked about it, but uh, that could be have only the, like one lecture by itself. But this is a, a kind of a brief uh, description about it. The pyramids was to, uh, as, a, as you can see, uh, you could imagine uh, this pyramid here was covered by by uh, limestone was all white you can see how beautiful and even the top very top was uh, destroyed because basically the local people was taking the the stones from the pyramid to use it in their uh, in their uh, 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 what do, in their buildings but the, the pyramid itself when it's finished you could imagine how this is the accuracy of uh, the of building the pyramid is just no mistake with their t with with their uh, very uh, uh, simple tools, but they, they reach the accuracy almost uh, one hundred percent. There is no mistakes in the directions in the four uh, four directions: north, south, east, west, uh, and also about the how the uh, uh, the, the level and how the, uh, uh, the in the in the very bottom the heavy uh, stones, and as you go up, will be lighter. And there's more details about that. As I mentioned, we may have just one uh, presentation about the pyramids itself. So from the pyramids, we'll move, uh, we'll move to Cairo. The Cairo is the capital of Egypt. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, Cairo is uh, uh, also on the River Nile, where you can see in one side of the river is Cairo, and on the other side is uh, Giza, where the pyramids are. But they call it the, Was the as you call the Washington metro area, they call it the Cairo metro area. So Cairo is covering all this, one of the largest populated city in the world, Cairo is. And this is, this is a kind of one of the uh, hotels there. This is a broadcasting station in, in Cairo. You can say this is uh, the ferry, the, 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 uh, uh, the first broadcasting station in Africa. And uh, all these uh, high rises in Cairo, now uh, it's there, but Cairo is very unique uh, city around the world. This is a broadcasting station, and this is uh, hotels around, and Cairo also known as the 1,000 minaret city, because they have one. Uh, it was known because there's many minarets or many mosques inside uh, the city of uh, Cairo itself, because it's old Cairo or new Cairo. So now, uh, as you can see. Uh, there is the River Nile, and uh, uh, tourism industry is uh, one of the main industry in, in, in Egypt and Cairo. 
So uh, people take cruises in the, in, the, in the Nile. They go to have the dinners or in the Nile also, uh, on such accommodations. Uh, uh, whoever go to Egypt enjoy such uh, uh, accommodations. So now we're moving to the uh, citadel of Saladin. That's in old in old in old Cairo, uh, where uh, the uh, uh, Saladin was a very well known uh, uh, leader in in, in in Egypt in Islamic time of Egypt, who united the forces of the Muslims and the, was defe defeated. Uh, 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 he was able to be to, to to be victorious in many of the expeditions. So this is the again here in Cairo also. The the uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, the museum of Cairo. The museum of Cairo is one of the museum, one of the largest museums in the world, where the uh, where houses artifacts or uh, about about Egypt only. So this is the largest uh, museum uh, with artifact about one country. Uh, you, as we mentioned before about King Ramses, this is just the head of one of the statues of King Ramses. As I mentioned, he liked the gigantic scale of his statues. So how the accuracy, how the scales, and how beautiful the design uh, that we're going to see. Uh, look, this is uh, look how look how beautiful this uh, here. This is because of the largest size of it. So they have it in the, in this setting uh, uh, on its back. Uh, but uh, uh, Cairo is full of uh, 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 the statues uh, about the uh, ancient uh, kings and queens. This is one of them here, King Ram, King Tut, a mask. Uh, King Tut. What's unique about him that uh, the uh, he discovered his tombs untouched. Nobody was able to get into his tomb to steal uh, what's within it, and this is the reason that uh, this well known, famous, because this is all all this golden uh, uh, masks and uh, precious stones uh, uh, for this uh, king here was found in his tomb, and uh, uh, we'll move on now to another uh, the, uh, parts of the uh, of Cairo, where we mentioned the, uh, the, the, the minarets, and this is a, a kind of a modernized uh, art that in Egypt also uh, has several uh, uh, arts. we we'll move to another city called Port Said, and Port Said is in the, in the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean, that's where the Swiss Canal, if you heard of Swiss Canal, connecting the Red Sea to the Mediterranean. And this is the administration of the canal itself. And you can see how beautiful the city, uh, city of uh, all the cities there has uniqueness that you can't find anywhere else. Every city you had historical uh, uh, background. And this is how the Swiss Canal uh, that connecting the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. Now we're going to move to Alexandria uh, the city of Alexandria, it's a unique, uh, uh, first in Alexandria called the burial of the Mediterranean. And this is a, a city, a kind by citadel, uh, like a, uh, to defend the, the city of Alexandria from the Mediterranean side. Uh, and this is the Library of Alexandria. Library of Alexandria is very historical, uh, goes back to the, used to be like one of the earliest uh, universities in the world. Where, where people from all over the world used to go there to learn, and but unfortunately, the the original uh, library was destroyed, was burned, and many of the original uh, manuscripts was uh, destroyed in the fires. But uh, what's left, whoever went there and copied uh, these uh, uh, manuscripts, was able to survive. But the knowledge been destroyed through this. Uh, 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 fire, but now they're reviving the idea of the library, and they built now in Alexandria a city uh, library of Alexandria. It is now one of the largest uh, libraries in the world. With the technology, the modern technology there, that you can even just uh, Google Library of Alexandria, you can access information that you can't find anywhere else in the in the world. Um, this is the the beaches of in Alexandria. Look how beautiful. Uh, they are, and this is the, the Mediterranean Sea, and the, uh, the, uh, basically the city, it's around the, around the, uh, the Mediterranean. So uh, wherever, this is one of the uh, Montaza Palace, this is uh, one of the, uh, it was built by a former uh, king of, 
of Egypt is like a city by itself in the, in the, in the Mediterranean, how beautiful it is, You're very unique, uh, uh, and also other things like the, the lighthouse, since Alexandria is uh, across from the, uh, from the Mediterranean, so to guide the ships to come to the, uh, to the, to the city, so they have these lighthouses as an indication that they are uh, nearby. So this basically uh, uh, some of the uh, landmarks of the Alexandria. Now we move into the last city we're going to talk about called Marsa Matruh. Marsa Matruh is, as you can see, located west of Alexandria, nearby Libya. And Marsa Matruh is also another unique nature that the, Egypt, the people go to there to visit uh, on the uh, Mediterranean Sea. With uh, this kind of rocks, you can see uh, different colors, and people go there for, because of the, 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 the beaches around the Matruh. It's a place for uh, people to enjoy. That's n nothing like it anywhere else. So uh, Marsa Matruh, you can see Ajiba, so look at different colors of the rocks. People there to, to, to enjoy the calmness. So it's basically, this is a quick um, uh, presentation about uh, Egypt now. So now we have, are open for any questions. If anybody has any questions, are welcome to to uh, to answer. So uh, uh, Sierra, if you have, uh, did you read any answer, any questions there? I can answer. Guys, feel free to ask any questions you have. You can even read it off of your email. That's kind of why I had you do that assignment. So you can have them written down and ready. Dr. Ali, this is Kayla. I have a question for you. Yes, Kayla. Uh, my question is, can you um, say the similarities and or differences between ancient Egypt and current day Egypt? The difference between ancient Egypt and the current Egypt? Yes, and similarities. Yes. As well. Yes, I tell you uh, uh, the language, uh, let's take the language for instance. The language of the uh, modern Egyptians, you could find that they combine the ancient uh, Egyptian language to the modern one. You can find people using the same language that, that the ancient Egyptian used to, used to use. For instance, when they sing songs, for instance, when they receive uh, festivals, they call something called Wahawiya Wahawi, Iyaha. This is ancient Egyptians. When they, were, when they use the word called Bah, bih, bah they, when, when someone, for instance, say, I have nothing else, I don't have anything else, they call Bah, and this is ancient Egyptians. And so on, many of the words that the ancient Egyptians used to use, it is uh, uh, used now. So this is about the, uh, about the language, about the traditions also, the generosity and the, the, uh, the well uh, uh, receiving of the uh, uh, Egyptians now, it's uh, coming from the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians was very generous people and, the, and now when, the, when the people go to visit Egypt, they see that uh, firsthand, they, they, they feel they, oh, also even the world when they receive someone, you they call them minawarin, mean that you brought light with you, you brought uh, joy and happiness. So this is how uh, the uh, the guests are received. And when it's come to the, for instance, the uh, as I mentioned about the uh, the art, look look now, uh, 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 the ancient Egyptian art is being reproduced uh, as a, as you, as I show such a, a, a papyrus here. The, this papyrus here shows that how. The, uh, you can find cities and villages, and many people they are day and night they sitting to reproduce their uh, their art uh, from the ancient Egyptian uh, temples and tombs. So they are very uh, uh, proud of their heritage, and they like to uh, the, uh, to uh, re revive uh, such art. And the, uh, even not only that, in the fashion. If you look at the, the, the uniqueness of the fashion of the ancient Egyptians shows in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the modern fashion now, when you go to fabric places, you find the, uh, the fashion uh, uh, very, very similar to the fashion of the ancient Egyptians that they used to use. 
even the perfumes when you even not only in in egypt but even around the world you find the the the, the egyptian mask or the egyptian perfumes is there everywhere so you could find the the, the connections is very close so uh, even uh, adopting that modern technology but the, even the use of the modern technology to to revive their egyptian heritage and they are very proud of it so this is basically just in a, in a small scale of what we're talking about. The, the Egyptians are very uh, uh, close to the, their heritage, and the, uh, the, because they see that on in everywhere, wherever they go, they find their uh, the heritage of their ancestors, and they are very proud of it. Okay, I'm gonna read some of the questions on here. Sure. Um. So someone wants to know, how old was the old, um, the oldest known Egyptian, and was Cleopatra an Egyptian? And okay. also, it's a three-part question: Are there any um, discoveries still to be made? Oh yes. Okay. The uh, the there was discoveries about ancient Egypt goes back to uh, seven thousand, even ten thousand years for the prehistory. They call it the, the you know the Egyptian history divided to to prehistory or old, old and ill old kingdom and the first the first intermediate period and then the middle uh, uh, kingdom and then second intermediate period and then the new kingdom so in the prehistory there is a uh, found uh, artifacts and and things related to uh, uh, ages of uh, 7000 and 10000 uh, years of uh, all those uh, uh, organized civilized communities was living around the river Nile. That's how old the Egyptians. And it related to uh, the question of Cleopatra. Cleopatra was a descendant of the Ptolemies. The Ptolemies, uh, after the Alexander the Great uh, invaded Egypt, uh, and after the King uh, Alexander uh, died, uh, the, the leaders of Alexander divided the world around them, over the, uh, and, and, and Egypt was, was uh, from the share of Ptolemies. And Ptolemies, uh, he the the uh, they were in Egypt for a hundred couple of hundred years, and Cleopatra was the largest was the was the was the last queen of this. Uh, but uh, all these um, kings and and the, the Ptolemies, they were always even Alexander himself when he went to Egypt, he was claiming to uh, or imitating the Egyptian kings. So he was trying to Egyptianize themselves because basically whoever went went to Egypt. They get Egyptianized because they get affected with the Egyptian traditions. So Queen Cleopatra, she of course her ancestor for 100 to 100 years was was living in Egypt, but basically she was the this descendants of the Ptolemies, that the 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 leader, the military leader who came with Alexander and uh, Egypt was <clears throat> with his share. Uh, what uh, did the uh, now if if any other discoveries? Yes. Absolutely, the desert of Egypt is full of uh, treasures, but the thing that uh, to fund such discoveries and also where to put the sands itself, where you take the sand, everywhere is uh, sand, thing is covered with sand. That whenever they do, if you if you if you watch any uh, discoveries, you find that something else uh, uh, need to be discovered related to that. So not all the facts about the ancient Egyptian civilization is known. There's a lots of things to be discovered and a lots of information to waiting to be uncovered from the sand. And if any of you are interested in, in such presentations, you are welcome to contact the, the Egyptian embassy, the cultural Egyptian embassy, and they can, they can put you the list that you can send you uh, uh, links to whenever they have presentations about ancient Egyptian civilization or anything related uh, by send you email send you email to it so it's very informative and all uh, of course free with charge you can uh, attend with, uh, uh, in regular basis and such uh, 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 you know lectures and presentations okay and then um, I'm going to ask the, the next question that we have in the chat and then I'll let anyone else speak up if they'd like to. Uh -huh. um, so someone wants to know um, 
about like any conspiracy theories um, that you know that sticks out to you about ancient Egypt? And then um, <clears throat> when did mummification become popular? Okay. Uh, first, let's uh, about the conspiracy theories. Really, uh, whatever it's said about the because of the the uniqueness of the ancient Egyptian civilization, and because of the uh, things that kind of a strange out of norm. So, so people may think some people they they related they related it to unknown uh, civilization, or they related to out of space. Or they related, but but this all this is not true. Uh, the Egyptian civilization uh, 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 produced by the Egyptians, and the Egyptian was very uh, civilized. It was very uh, intelligent and was very uh, the, the uh, very clever in all sciences, in different sciences. If you just to any field, medical field, in and uh, as I mentioned about how the the stars and sun and earth move. And about uh, uh, even the, the mummification, we'll talk, we'll talk about about the mathematics and the, the uh, things that you can find the, the discovered papyrus shown even in the art. Not only that, in the art and even the ethics, and even some of the uh, wise men in in Egypt, they talk about uh, uh, ethics and morals that is not uh, you can you, you 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 don't differentiate it with the morals and ethics that the the. The, the religion, the, the Judeo, uh, Christian, Islamic uh, ethics, that all, all there. So this means that the Egyptians, uh, of course, many of the prophets who were in Egypt, like uh, uh, even the, and even Egypt itself is named after the son of uh, a prophet, Noah. His name is Misraim, because Egypt in Arabic we call Misr. So Misraim is uh, uh, the name of the, of the son of Noah. And also another uh, prophet, Idris, was in Egypt. Prophet Musa grew up in Egypt and uh, and also and, and buried on Sinai, and uh, Prophet Jesus also went to Egypt, and uh, many of the prophets, uh, Prophet Abraham went to Egypt. So Egypt was a unique place because it uh, was, was was the attraction of uh, 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 of many uh, historical figures in the past to go there. So Egypt is unique, and this is the reason. Unfortunately, some people that they don't know the. Uh, 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 the, 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 this is the real uh, Egyptian produced civilization, so they, they connected to something else unknown. And uh, for as a, as a uh, me as a study Egyptology, you know that's that's not true. Everything in Egypt is from the Egyptians, and also you notice that uh, Egypt is a is a civilization that been carried on throughout the history as an Egyptian civilization. This is not changed. Uh, in other countries, like for instance, if you take Iraq or uh, has several civilizations like Sumerians, uh, Babylonians, Assyrians, Akkadians, uh, they rise and fall. But always in Egypt, may, may, may come to uh, begin uh, some, uh, like for instance, all the kingdom, uh, when the end of it, will have some period uh, with the uh, intermediate, and then come again the Middle Kingdom. And even invaders, when they invade Egypt, after that the Egyptians they, they expel them, like Hyksos, for instance, and so on. So Egypt was for, made by the Egyptians throughout the history, and no, uh, no out of space, uh, no other civilization was there. Only Egyptian civilization. Um, okay, um, I have another question um, uh -huh. about you know how like they always a lot of people talk about there's like curses put when um if you enter the pyramids or um things that you shouldn't touch is that is that true okay i uh, tell you what um uh, uh, in the past in, in the time of the pharaohs since they knew that some people they uh, they, they they may go and try to steal their content the contents of the of their tombs so of course to protect them from that the uh, the mention uh, that statements it's like uh, like for instance when you uh, when you uh, when you have when you when you try to uh, to guard something they give a warning and what they what they did they may have some kind of chemicals that because in, in when they discovered the king king tut uh, many thing, many incidents of death happened and maybe that's when they breathe these chemicals that that happened that's this is not so scientifically it's known uh, could be because of of that, 
but really as a curse of the of the pharaohs uh, in the, in reality it's well, as, as egyptologists or as uh, uh, someone who studied egypt there is nothing nothing in in real really but it could be done intentionally uh, as i mentioned first of all by warning the people to disturb the king as he sleep in peace uh, like uh, someone don't disturb me as uh, like a warning but uh, if it is something happened related to the uh, physical uh, uh, results could be because of the uh, what the what they left in the tombs as uh, chemicals and when these people got in they breathed these chemicals and that's how they uh, they died uh, after they went inside Uh, does anyone else have any questions before we start to wrap up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, your voice is not clear. Uh, can, can you hear it clear, uh, Sierra? No. Can you repeat that? Or maybe if you write it, if you try a text to write it, maybe it would be better. I'm sorry, I'm still, I'm not hearing you clear. Uh, how about clear, uh, Sierra, can you hear him? Yeah, it's, it's breaking up on my end. Did you say something about the pros and cons of... Something. Can you write it down and then we'll read it for you? Since it's kind of hard to hear. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And while you're writing that down, I'm going to um, ask if anyone else wants to speak while I'm while he's typing. Would anybody else like to go? No? Okay. Um, let me check the chat. So I'll just wait for him to post Sure, it. sure, yeah. yeah. Terrell, did you want to um, add any input? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, you're talking to me? Oh, no, I was saying um, Ms. Terrell, I was asking oh, if she'd like to say okay. anything. No, I don't have anything. Okay. All right, Jeremiah, did you type it? <clears throat> okay, can you, um, this is not from Jeremiah, but can you speak on the economic climate of um, Egypt? Sure. Yes, uh, uh, but in, in the past uh, um, in, or in the, in the present, in, no. the, in the past, okay. Egypt, okay, in the past, Egypt was, uh, yeah. uh, it was depending on agriculture, the agriculture uh, because of the River Nile, so the River Nile was shown the, uh, the uh, 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 common and steady, in a specific time of the year, and uh, uh, everybody knows when it's going to the River Nile will uh, will flood. So they blend their uh, uh, what what they have to do accordingly. So the industry was the agriculture, and the, basically uh, the uh, Egypt was kind of the source of uh, of, of even helping the. Uh, not only the uh, Egyptian, but even the neighboring uh, places, like uh, for instance, the, uh, the incident of uh, Prophet Joseph, when uh, there was a famine happened in, the, in that part, of, and the, the people was coming from outside, from the, his uh, like his brothers, and they was to come to Egypt to get food. So Egypt was like a like like the the, the uh, place for the people to get. All what they want, uh, food-wise and work-wise, they, they come to even the uh, and Egypt was the the place to, for for all such economic uh, progress. But not only uh, in the in the agriculture, but also in other fields 
Actually, I'm sorry, one time you will ask me about the mummification, but I did not highlight it, but then I can talk about it now. The mummification is a unique uh, that the Egyptians were able to succeed in it because they had it in the beginning, was, uh, they developed uh, a process, and the Egyptians was, uh, uh, they was clever in that because the, uh, the, the, that science of, uh, of, of mummify, mummification was going through several, several processes to, to about 70, more than 70 days. And, the, uh, and how they did, how they, they, uh, was, they put the body of the deceased person in minerals to observe the liquid, and also how they, they took the, the interior part of it and put it in a, what's called canopic jars. And of course the mummification in the stages for the kings and, and queens will be the highest level of, uh, of accuracy and how, but also the mummifications could be done for individuals too, according to what they want to spend. And, uh, and, and actually uh, this was like a business of uh, uh, when, the, when the person die, if they can spend the money to mummify themselves, so they can do that. But for the kings and the queens and the high officials, uh, this is how mummy, mummies was discovered in their tombs like uh, with very details like their hairs and their nails and their uh, their bodies the skins and they even shown that they were able even to discover things through the dna to how the ending of the person happened so all this shows the uh, uh, through the mummifications the mummification they basically preserve the bodies of the individuals uh, through a very complicated process uh, so this so is um, revolutionized the funeral industry. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Okay, so, so um, we're going to wrap it up in a little bit, but we just I'm just going to read you these um, final questions. Uh -huh. um, so you wanted to know about the the foods of, of ancient Egypt. Um, it has the diet changed, or do you guys still have like some of the same cultural yes. um, foods? Absolutely. You know, very unique. Uh, I was given a presentation at the at the uh, University of Maryland, the uh, Faculty of Tourism there. And there was a very uh, lady, actually I may uh, uh, mention here, she, she, was, uh, she was given, her presentation was about the food of the ancient Egyptians. And it was very unique. And that the, even the diet of the ancient Egyptians is still known. And the, for instance, nowadays with the corona uh, virus, they say the ancient Egyptians, they protected themselves from viruses through different type of food and you will be surprised that this food is uh, is well known and is well uh, existed now and the egyptians they use it one of it uh, uh, called the, when they use this kind of uh, even the the uh, uh this specific type of spices that they add to their food that it was known uh, in ancient egypt and is still known and uh, i will be glad to to uh, uh, to bring this information to uh, to Tisha and that she could even distribute it about this presentation about this lady who give uh, almost uh, a half an hour or more about about the ancient Egyptian food and the word for instance the word the the, the, the bread in ancient Egypt used to be called aish and aish mean life and uh, uh, some uh, fruits and some vegetables well known and still used and the Egyptian used it and the, for the immune system it's unique and the, even now whenever you hear such uh, recipes the, they say that was used in ancient Egypt so it is very good uh, interesting topic that if you just uh, google it and also I'll be glad to bring such uh, uh, information but yes the, the uniqueness of the Egyptian food and it's still, it's still known now as of uh, the people, the Egyptians used it as of now, and that's make the Egyptians uh, strong and healthy, and uh, their immune system is, uh, is very uh, uh, strong because of that. Sierra, are you talking? Because I, I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing you. I'm muting myself. Uh, okay, okay, good. good. Just to wrap everything up. Um... What was the last question someone wanted to know? Um, how is COVID-19 affecting Egypt right now? Do you know what, what's happening there? Yes, actually, uh, as, uh, as Egypt is part of the world, uh, COVID-19, uh, COVID coronavirus is also was in Egypt too, but uh, and Egypt was uh, played a uh, uh, you know, uh, very uh, important role in, 
in trying to keep to minimize that and the uh, keeping things in control and uh, again as i mentioned using the recipes of ancient egyptian in, in, uh, because uh, as you know the coronavirus if you if the person has a strong immune system so they can pass and people go there as soon as the any uh, uh, sympt symptoms on the person they go in a uh, in a, in, a, in a place where they do they don't uh, be exposed to anybody else and after 14 days they get they get medicine they get this kind of uh, 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 recipes that uh, will 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 strengthen the immune system and many 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 people they come uh, cured and uh, some people yes they die especially the old one with their with, with their immune system weak but uh, egypt is uh, uh, you could find that uh, it's not like anywhere like not here in the states or like in italy or in, uh, it's things under control uh, comparing to uh, other places because of such a preparation and uh, and uh, and and the, and the food itself that the people use uh, to strengthen their immune system. Okay. Um, well, I think we have to start wrapping everything up. But thank you so much for your presentation. Oh, uh, very welcome. Very welcome. And uh, next time we'll uh, we'll see, see you on, on Thursday at eleven. The Thursday at eleven, and we'll see what uh, else yeah. we'll uh, discuss. Okay, and uh, Saturday will deliver this uh, virus to the to Keisha to distribute to everybody. Okay, thank you. I'm okay. Gonna get that to when you give it to um, Ms. Hudson. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, great. great day, everyone. Thank I'll you. I'll check in with you guys um, on tomorrow. Okay. You have a good uh, okay. afternoon, everybody. Okay. Thank have you, a good one, You're very welcome. Very welcome. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.